And then she had on like this jacket that had like leopard and um regular denim. It was like denim leopard. And it was two-toned and she had the collar flipped up and some red pumps. I was like, come on with it, all the way. And her and her jury curl was jury curling. <laughs> Love bugs. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, tell a friend, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com for our book club tote because we've been reading with Uptown Nero. And if you are not already a part of the book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube and for a small monthly fee of five dollars you babies yes you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it if the YouTube gets it now child let's continue reading this big fat ass book about Michael Jackson y'all we about to read about this thriller video y'all oh when I tell you I'm about to give you possessed with this the thriller video combined illusion and reality, skillfully weaving one into the other. The story opens with Michael pulling his white Chevy convertible over to the side of a wooded road. In a line that has been around since 10 minutes after the first Model T rolled off the assembly line, Michael turns to the date Ola Ray, a former Playboy Cinefold and says, I'm afraid we're out of gas. However, instead of staying put and romancing, they start to walk. He asks her to be his girl. She accepts. I'm not like other guys, he then tells her in a soft and whispery voice. Of course not, she says, brushing off one of the great understatements of all time. That's why I love you. No, Michael insists. I mean, I'm different. As the moon comes out from behind a cloud, Ola discovers how different Michael really is. How many other guys sprout fangs, claws, and whiskers, and bray at the moon as they turn into werewolves. He chases her through the woods. She trips. She is flat on her back. He hovers over her, clearly up to no good. Just yeah. as the monster is about to attack, the camera focuses on Michael. Michael and Ola as part of a movie theater audience dressed in a more modern fashion than their 1950 style counterparts on the screen. She is cringing in horror while he is clearly enjoying the scene. I can't watch, she says, getting up to leave. Reluctantly putting aside his popcorn, Michael follows her out of the theater, playfully taunting her about her fears. He begins singing Thriller as they walk along the deserted street. Some pause. Nigga, I am still looking for that guest outfit Ola Ray had on. It was like a, a two-tone outfit because back in the 80s, that was the shit. Guests used to be the shiz. I still wear guests, but, you know, some people think they too good for guests because you can find that over there at the Marshalls or, or the TJ Maxx or the Ross. It was like these um Capri or Knee-Bockers, Nicky, Nick knee knee penny bockers whatever they call paddle pushers and it was blue and then she had on like this jacket that had like leopard and 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 um regular denim it was like denim leopard and it was two-tone and she had the collar flipped up and some red pumps i was like come on with it all the way and her and her jury curl was jury curling and then she had some combs because that's what we used to do back in the day we used to stuff our um curls i ain't never had no curls that wasn't dc shit but we used to take our curl or or whatever hairstyle we had and we used to put combs in it on the side so it can look like a, 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 a mohawk but not a mohawk okay man she was cow cow man that bitch was so super duper fly in that video for the 80s that still that outfit still super fly you heard me anyway 
let's move forward. I just had to acknowledge Ola Ray's outfit because uh, J. Randy Terrible Lele didn't. Okay, come on, Terrible Lele, if you gonna get busy, get busy. All right, I had some coffee today. When they pass a graveyard, an ensemble of ghouls emerge from their graves and crypts to surround the couple. With skin the color of mushrooms, blood dripping from the corners of their mouths, and eyeballs bulging halfway out of their heads, they look as though they have been moldering for a long time. Come on, Thriller! Ola escapes to find shelter in a deserted house. Meanwhile, Michael leads the grotesque company in dance. His features contorted and menacing. His blood red clothing contributing to his sinister appearance. He leads the other ghouls to Ola and as she trembles in fear, Michael and his gruesome company breaks through the walls, the windows, the floor. Ola huddles on the sofa, screaming as Michael reaches out for her. Suddenly, they are in Michael's home. Hey, What's the problem? A smiling Michael asks. Ola looks up at him with confused eyes. Was it all a dream? Michael puts his arm protectively around her shoulder, but then as he turns to face the camera, his eyes are bestilled. His smile ominous. There's little doubt that Michael never intended the video to advocate Satanism or the occult. He was so engrossed with fantasy, Thriller was no scarier to him than Halloween. After all, when he finished a hard day's work on the set, he went home to a bunch of dead-eyed mannequins in his bedroom. Before he had even finished work on it, though, the video brought to head an ongoing conflict between Michael and the church elders of the Encino Kingdom Hall. After the elders heard about the concept, they summoned Michael for a meeting, during which the state of his soul was discussed. He was not receptive. He didn't want to be told what to do, not by his father or not by his church either. He refused to make any kind of of statement repudiating his work as the church insisted he should. I know I'm an imperfect person, Michael said. I'm not making myself out to be an angel. Finally, when the elders threatened to banish him from the religion, Michael became worried. He telephoned John Bronca's office. Paul, you know, uh, the Jehovah's have a uh, practice of shunning but they're changing things that's not how things are now they're trying to do things differently now so that they can be more let's say marketable because you know the church isn't anything but a uh, pyramid scheme you know to invite people in so we can get your money all right and i don't have a problem with the church because i believe in the church and if you want something to work just like my book club you have to contribute you have to bring in more members that's why i say tell a friend but I think the J-Dubs have realized that some of their practices uh, have hurt them, especially in today's society. I look forward to uh, the people that, I, I forget them over up there in New York, the governing body. I look forward to seeing a woman eventually. When John's secretary picked up the phone, there seemed to be no one on the line. All she heard was the sound of desperate breathing as if someone was trying to catch his breath in between sobs. I don't know who it is, she told John. It might be Michael. When John got on the line and heard nothing but panting, he became concerned. However, before he could figure out what was going on, the line went dead. John telephoned Michael, but there was no answer. The next day, Michael called back and whispered that he had a big problem. Then he abruptly hung up. Could he be any more dramatic? These kinds of maddening cryptic telephone calls went on for several days until John was extremely worried about Michael. Finally, Michael got a hold of himself, apparently, and called John to ask if he had the tapes 
to the Thriller video. When the attorney said that he didn't have them, that they were in the processing lab, Michael instructed him to retrieve them. Then I want you to destroy them, Michael said. He sounded desperate. No one must ever see the video. Before John had a chance to respond, Michael hung up. Michael called back the next day wanting to know if his attorney had gotten the tapes. By this time, John was tired of playing games. He wanted to know what was going on, especially since Michael had already spent a million dollars of MTV's, Showtime's, and Vestron's money on Thriller. How could they now destroy the tapes? When Michael explained that his church had threatened to expel him if the Thriller tape was released to the public, John was astounded. He tried to convince Michael that he should not allow the church elders to dictate his artistry, but Michael wasn't interested in his opinion at that point. Like I said, they're definitely doing things differently now. You know, I, I can say that the J-dubs were a bit controlling, but I, I, I like... No, I love the direction that they're going in now. Michael called back the next day. Do you have the tapes? He asked John. John did. When Michael asked, "Do you? did you destroy them? John said that he had done just that. Actually, though, they were sitting on his desk. Okay, then fine, Michael said. He hung up. Coincidentally, at the same time, John had been reading a book about Bella Lugosi. After thinking about Lugosi and his Dracula character, John called Michael back and engaged him in a conversation about the horror star, explaining to Michael that Lugosi had been a religious man, but that as an actor, he played the demonic Dracula and actually built a career for himself by doing so. Uh, Lugosi wasn't a Jehovah Witness though. Okay, I'll move forward. Michael listened intently as John then told him that Lugosi religious beliefs had no bearing on his art and that the fact that he portrayed a vampire in movies didn't make him any less religious in real life. He suggested that Michael might want to reconsider issuing the thriller video with a disclaimer at the beginning stating that the work was not reflective of Michael's personal or religious conviction. Michael thought John's suggestions was brilliant. He wasn't even angry when John confessed that he not destroyed the tapes after all. The next day, John telephoned the video director, John Landis, to tell him that there would have to be a disclaimer. Bullshit, Landis said. No way. Look, man, if there's no disclaimer, then there'll be no video, John told him. He then explained the entire story to Landis. Jesus Christ, Landis said. This kid is in bad shape, isn't he? Yup. Michael about to lose his mind. The week what? before the Thriller video was released in late December 1983, Thriller sales had slowed down to 200,000 copies a week, more than respectable for an album that had been out for a year. According to Time, the week after the video was issued and televised on MTV for only five days, the album sold another 600,000 copies and shot back up to number one on the Billboard chart. Charts. Don't play with the Michael! The first order of business for 1984 was the filming of the two Pepsi Cola commercials.
Thank you.